Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Leilani, do you want to do the uh, roll call? Call to order. Yes. John Kale. Here. Amy Ida. Here. Mark Krinovich. Here. Thanks, Leilani. Our first item for the agenda today is to approve our proceedings from the September 4th, 2020 meeting. I I'll moved. just start by asking if there are any questions. Go ahead. I, I have no questions, and if there aren't any, I move that we approve the minutes from the September 4th, 2020 meeting. I'll second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 So the meeting minutes are approved from the September 4th, 2020 meeting. And moving on to our first item of new business um, is to review, uh, start the review for the Civil Service Commission rules updates. Um, so I guess the question is how we want to go about uh, starting the review process. Um, so if I may suggest, mm -hmm. I could share my screen. I just, um, I had a PDF version and I converted it, um, very quickly into a word version so we can make edits as we go. Um, so it may not look perfect because sometimes spacing gets whacked out, um, when you do the conversion. Um, but if you like, we can just kind of go section by section through it. Um, if you guys have questions or comments that I don't know the answer to, we'll just put margin notes in and look into them and circle back at the next meeting. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Let me get the screen up here. Jewel, I mean, yeah. I don't think, John, were you, were you on the commission the last time these were updated or 2015? I was. I was. Okay. Um, Chief Shaner of the fire department and hmm. Debbie and I and Joelle uh, worked on them okay. together. Has joined the meeting. Okay, I think we have Bob on the call now. Hello. Hello. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Bob. Hi. Well, you came just at the right time, Bob. So um, we did share, Leilani um, sent the this 2015 version excuse me, which was adopted uh, five years ago, uh, five plus years ago, to the department heads um, with a request that they weigh in. Um, one of the department heads has gotten some feedback to us, and we'll cover that as we get to it. Um, and then uh, Bob and I can also chime in when there are things that over the course of the years we've run across a situation, because honestly, that's how we you know, figure out what's wrong with this. It's not like mm -hmm. the state puts out a template every year or something. Um, we are a home rule city. And as a result, we have the ability to um, modify um, the rules. We are not stuck with the Ohio revised code 124 mechanism. Um, we kind of look to it, I guess, as a gap filler. Um, but uh, sometimes because we also have a city handbook, a collective bargaining agreement with the fire department and one with the uh, police department, sometimes we find that things don't dovetail nicely. Uh, and we did run into a couple of situations this year where we had to sort of uh, try to interpret as, as, as reasonably as possible what the intent of these rules was. Okay, so let's can, see. Can you say, just for my own uh, information, so, so we we can change the language of this and then at the council or who approves any kind of changes that we make? You make your own rules. Okay. I don't, I don't recall that you are required to um, have them adopted by council. I will double check the charter or maybe Leilani, if you could check online while we're in this screen, because I don't think I can um, swap out to another screen while I've got this up. Um, but I don't think there's anything. And so on this page here, this is, you know, the authority of the civil service commission comes from, 
um, Section 6 of the Charter. Uh, and Mark, um, fortunately, served on our Charter Review Commission multiple times over the yes. last <laughs> few years. So he's very familiar with how all of that process um, happens. But um, this is sort of the mandate and the extent of the mandate that's in the Charter. The rest is really up to uh, the city and to the commission to set its own rules. Uh, and uh, so there's nothing in here that requires the rules to be um, adopted by council. Mm -hmm. Now, I, okay. the reason I pause a little bit is because I'm looking at this and I'm trying to figure out why it says not in charter. I'm going to highlight that so we remember to figure out if that belongs in there. I think that's must have been some kind of a footnote or something that landed in there accidentally. Um, okay, so the following set of rules and regulations is hereby adopted in accordance with the authority conferred upon the Municipal Civil Service Commission of the city uh, by section 10 of article 15 of the state constitution, and which is the home rule provision, and by the Grandview Heights City Charter section 6.3, which states, I should have been doing this in redlining actually, so I'm gonna turn on my redlining. Section 6.3, comma, which states, or which state, because it's plural. Okay. And then this is just cut and pasted right out of the charter, so we don't need to do anything there other than check on whatever this thing is. Uh, this is also cut and pasted from the charter, so we don't have the ability to change anything that's in the charter. So then looking at the definitions, um, I don't think that there have been any statutory changes from the revised code that would impact any of this. Last time around, there was the term provisional employee had um, been done away with by the state of Ohio, so we have some, some changes there. But I do remember that you guys had a discussion maybe about three meetings ago around the term temporary employee. So do we, do we want to go through the ones before temporary employer, or do you... I mean, like, for example, just starting, you know, we say the appointing authority, the officer board or body having the power to appoint and remove from positions in any office, department or board. Yeah. I mean, can or do we mean that to mean is that is that like a is that the department head? Or the, the, no, the technically the mayor is the only appointing authority in the city, so we could just disband, you know, get rid of that whole I, I guess I come from, we did a, we did, and, you know, working in VA for a long time, we, in writing a lot of things, um, try to emphasize this notion of plain language. And with all due respect to all the attorneys that are here, I mean, and it just, just in terms of simplifying and making more clear anywhere we can, I'm always in favor of that so that you know that there's there re removes any ambiguity. You know, and that's that's the, sort of the goal I would recommend. I second that emotion. Okay, okay cool. All right, John, uh, Amy. I mean, how do you feel? I'm um, I'm fine. I, I think that's the the right approach. I just um, are you saying you want to delete that first sentence, or are you saying you want to delete the definition altogether? I'm fine with the the concept of the appointing authority, just okay. making it more clear by saying if it's the mayor, then let it's say the it's mayor. the mayor. Yeah, yeah. I, I it says yeah. unless otherwise provided. Yeah, okay. and, yeah, right. Unless otherwise, yeah. okay. There's nothing in the charter that I'm aware of that designates anybody else. Now, the mayor does have the authority to designate, you know, somebody in her stead, um, for whatever reason. Um, and similarly, you know, that can be done by ordinance of council chooses to, but I think we're good without that first sentence. So okay. you are right on track, Mark. Okay. Um, assembled examination. So uh, that basically just is gathering people together for um, a competitive test. Typically that would be for the police and the fire. Um, Leilani or Bob, I don't know if, do we administer competitive tests for service department personnel? I have only uh, been involved in a police. Okay. Well, competitive tests, I mean, we just, uh, for service department, we just hired uh, a maintenance worker. Uh, so 
No, we pretty much just look at resumes and background. I, I haven't seen a competitive test in the service department. Okay. We, we have been since I've been on the commission been using, um, you know, like a non, it's a, 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 I guess it's a contract um, uh, um, examination testing center. Um, it, you know, we, um, we're not, we, the city doesn't actually do it, but we, we go to like for police and fire. Right. Um, um, do we need this to, do we need to clarify that at all? Or just that we um, have, the, we have I the right, go ahead. Yeah, it comes up later. Okay. I believe that there is a place, but I'll make a note of it just in case it doesn't. So let's see here. Assembled examination. Um, okay. I mean, it does say, you know, more, uh, in one or more designated centers and we, you know, we designate this contract, this, this firm that we use this, you know, It looks for the last thing instead of the next thing. Okay. Um, okay. Like I know for police, we use the national testing. Mm -hmm. what it's called. Um, we use them for recruiting it as well to post and so forth. We don't just use them for um, the examinations themselves, but we'll look for that and identify it. Um, the centers typically, I think we do them at the public library back in pre COVID days. That's where we've usually done the police examinations and the fire examinations. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the police exam that I was involved in, um, it may have been done at the high school. Okay. Okay. It, yeah, as long or as maybe it's, that was the physical part of it. Yeah. That's true. It could have been at the gymnasium for the physical. Yeah. All right. So we'll just look for the, the uh, types of tests that are given or the, the testing sites, or I don't know what we want to call them, test sources for now. Or, or approved. Yeah. Approved, just approved uh, uh, testing centers, because I, I recall when previous chief uh, came and said we, he'd like us to use that one because it's nationally recognized and it's a standardized process and yeah um, and i remember i recall i vaguely recall that we approved him doing that so okay um all right so certification that's just you know when you certify the eligibility list um just the process the city i don't even know why we need that but okay um Civil service includes all offices and positions of trust or employment in the service of the city of Grandview Heights and the, and the Grandview Boards of Board of Health. Um, we don't have any employees in the Board of Health, so I'm going to suggest we strike this. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Because, because theoretically, if we, the mayor can say, hey, we really need to have an epidemiologist for a short time because of something, then, then she has the right and we can approve that, right? Right. Okay. And so currently, just for informational purposes, it doesn't bear on this commission in any way, but uh, the Board of Health's activities are more or less um, funneled, if you will, through the building department. Um, they already have contacts with the county um, Franklin County Board of Health, from whom we purchased services, contracted services, um, including plumbing services, which is why the building department um, kind of ended up having, you know, hosting, if you will, the Board of Health. Um, so the Board of Health is a uh, volunteer uh, group of people like yourselves that are appointed uh, by the mayor with the consent of council and um, typically, historically, have probably only met, you know, two, three, four times a year uh, to look at the contract from the county, to think about you know how frequently we need mosquito spraying done, that kind of thing. This year, they've met a lot more, obviously, mm -hmm. for um, pandemic-related reasons. So, um, But we don't anticipate anytime soon having an employee. And if we were to hire an epidemiologist or something else, I'm sure that we would find a department to affiliate them with. Okay. I was on the uh, I was on the board of health for a while. Had a fill a, a mask me, and um, every call we used to look at uh, uh, the uh, 
restaurant review uh, reports. You know, they inspect restaurants <laughs> in the Grandview area, and that was very helpful to know where to go and where also not to go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, I'm just going to make some grammatical cleanups as we go along, too, just as I say. Yeah. Call them out if you see them and I don't. Okay, um, class, um, you know, I'm trying to think about whether we have class distinctions within any of our positions. Yeah. Bob, um, if you're still on, I know we have, like, you know, Inspector 1, Inspector 2. Is that what you think of as class? Well, I, um, um, yeah, the inspector one and two is a good example of um, a progression series in there. Um, you know, we talk about that occasionally. Of how do you reward, say, um, maintenance workers? You know, there's several people in the job title. And, you know, you can do it based on, you know, years, years of experience and so forth. But, um, you know, I, I could see the day coming where we make uh, a position like a maintenance worker be a progression series. We just haven't had enough employees in a small city. I, I'm used to seeing progression series for certain job titles, and we just haven't had occasion to do that here in Grandview, besides that one that, I, that you mentioned. Okay. All right, so we'll just put a little note here that do we even need this definition in here? Well, the, the I just did I just looked at the PDF version and just did a search for the word class, and it's used frequently in the in the in the in the rules. And I and that definition just is one that I'm not you know is that does that pretty well sum up what it means? It seems like a lot of words to me okay. to and I'm not sure. I want to know. I want to be inter be clear to, from all of you. What does that actually mean? Yeah, I don't know. I don't have an answer. I will. I will check. On Mark, what? How's it referred? How's it referred to in in the rules? Yeah. So let me go as back a, to that. an example. Yeah, this is a new computer, so I was just looking at it. Uh, where is it? Okay. I think I inadvertently went there. It is okay. Um, so obviously, if you uh, search for class, anything that says classification is also going to pop up. Um, sorry. Okay, so classified under the classified civil service uh, section, it talks about. Um, Two classes, the competitive class and the non-competitive class. I'm just scrolling through here quickly. Um, demo, and under the art, under the definition of uh, demotion, it talks about the movement of an employee from a position in one class to a position in another class, having a lower maximum salary um, um, uh, rate due to disciplinary reasons, incapacity to perform work, inefficiency or unsatisfactory work performance. Um, it, it just seems to me that they're going from one position to another position. And, I, and again, I'm not sure how the word class is intended to be used here. Um, new, under 18, a new position, a position created by proper authority because of uh, authorized additions to an organizational unit or through a, uh, through a substantial authorized change in class. And, and is it is it the position or the duties of the position that are at issue? Uh, I, again, I'm not sure what how we're what the intention is. Hmm. Um, if I was going to uh, think about uh, class, I, I think a better example I could offer is what we refer to as department secretary, because we had four of them. Each the each department had service, building, parks and rec. Um, and uh, fire had a department secretary. So when I think about, you know, maybe a layoff type of situation or, or bumping somebody, as we called it back in the day, it would be uh, a department secretary that, you know, had more or less experience in comparison with somebody else 
same job title, same classification, right. different department. I guess I just still think of that as a, the secretary as a position. Right. And then the class would be if you had, like, we have, like, you know, legal assistant one, like you were saying, inspe like, in inspector one and two. So I think of, like, the class as different rankings of the same position. But I don't know do, if we really even have that other than that one position you mentioned, Joelle. Yeah, I, mean, I think. Keep it for that reason, but. Like, we actually just created in the police department in the last contract a I guess I'll call it Sergeant One and Sergeant Two. I don't think those were the terms that they finally agreed to, but basically it's a starting sergeant up to three years and then a more senior sergeant. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a differential associated with that. Um, so let's hold on to that one and look at it again as it comes up in the uh, in the text. And what we could maybe go back and do is just say something like we used to designate um, um, various levels or uh, pay grades within a position or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Joel, there might be one other uh, newer example. Um, we might have created a rec supervisor one and two in recent years as well. Okay. I will make a note of that. Thank you. So, so again, I'm trying to get my mind around just so, so the class is a, a so it's a class of rec, um, would you say rec, recreation, supervisor. recreation supervisor one and, and two, that there's some, there's a, there's a pay distinction between them and, and yeah. different duties and responsibilities of the position. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Classification is just all of the different titles uh, and levels for each position. And the importance of that is that in the, in the revised code, um, it talks about having a classification plan. And so um, all of this gets boiled down to, you know, we have all of the positions that this commission has ever authorized and we can't, you know, go and hire some other position willy nilly. We can't hire an epidemiologist today. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to approve the position, you'd have to approve the job description, and it would be added to the official, you know, listing of all of the positions, which um, shows up in a document called the salary ordinance that council every three years. Um, and the salary ordinance is really the way that the city um, assures. Uh, non-bargained employees that they will be getting commensurate levels of benefits so that they don't run off and get their own union. Um, but every, you know, three years we rotate the police contract, the fire contract, and the salary ordinance for the non-uniformed folks. Um, and in that document, it lists every single position and every pay range associated with that position. Um, okay. And then in number Joel, eight, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. I'm just curious. I don't want to get off on a tangent, but is that something that the city council has the authority to do by by law or by by charter or something like that? The salary ordinance? Yeah. Uh, council, I think there's a historical um, carryover. I, I don't know how long ago it started, John. Um, it's been more than 16 years ago. I know that because Ray was there for 16 years and it, it predated him. Um, but it's not a statutory requirement um, at all. Um, you know, there's no reason to have anything that resembles a contract or a law that says thou shalt be granted this many vacation days or anything like that. It's all in the handbook. But I think it was a way to, you know, um, um, provide some assurance to people who didn't otherwise have a, a contract in the way that the police and the fire did. And so it's carried on kind of as a custom. Um, and I think arguably it's more than just a custom. Now I'd, <laughs> I'd argue it's a past practice. Um, yeah. Again, it's very difficult because having to update all of these policies continually, and then you're always having, you know, one or two year gaps where 
not everybody has the same thing in their document. Um, I don't love that, but where we are at this point. And, and council yeah, is really I was just curious. To do it, yeah. Yeah. So Thank you. the salary ordinance will come up for discussion in 2021. Um, in number eight, again, I'm just going to suggest re uh, striking through the school district and the board of health, the board of health, because there are no positions there. And the school district, this is a historical carryover from Ohio law where um, cities historically uh, represented school districts for purposes of doing all of the hiring. The school district asked us a number of years ago to allow them to do their own hiring. It was a real scheduling challenge to always have our city um, commission available to them and so forth. And frankly, we don't know the people that they're looking for or the skills mm -hmm. that are needed. Mm -hmm. They're in the best position to do that. So we were perfectly content to oblige them. And I think it's time we just take that out. Um, number eight is self-explanatory. Number nine, we just talked briefly about the notion of this, uh, these tests that we purchased. Competitive examination and examination given for the purpose of determining the relative rank of those qualifying and establishing an eligible list arranged in the order of merit. Um, I don't know if merit is the right word or- I, I agree. I, there needs to be a better word. It's, yeah. it's basically the examination results, isn't it? Yeah. That's how they're ranked, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was a little troubled by that word too. Yeah, there's really no merit consideration um, until the stage that, you know, the top three people are interviewed right. and vetted more closely. Is everybody good with that change to number 10? Any other thoughts? I, yes. am, I have a question. Um, uh, an examination is, I think my understanding is an examination is everything from a test to an interview, you know, to some other assessment. Is that right? Um, in this instance, it's so for police and fire, it is a test that the city purchases from a vendor like this national testing service. Um, there are lots of vendors out there. You know, most of them have been very mindful in the last 15 to 20 years. And I think Amy and John, you guys know this really well from your AG time. Um, a lot of these police and fire tests have come under fire and uh, been the subject of many lawsuits in terms of um, implicit bias. And, um, you know, they can say everybody took the same test, but some of these examinations skewed toward people of a certain background of a certain um, geographic area of the country. So there are companies that do nothing but make sure that these tests are, you know, beyond scrutiny. Um, so yeah. for the, the reason question, why I was asking, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that for that purpose, the examination only consists of that paper exam. It would not include like the physical that a police officer would have to go through or, you know, the math test that the accounting employee would have to go through. Well, maybe the accounting, I don't know. <laughs> the the, the reason why I was just asking was because when I've looked through these rules before, and I think about like a position in accounting or a position for Parks and Rec or, you know, some city department, other than the police department or the fire department, it seems like they refer to examination and that that is, I infer that that means not just a test, but the whole process. And I've always thought that was a little unclear I don't, I can't point to anything. So that just may be something we want to look out for going forward. Okay. Let me make a note here. I, I know in the federal service, to your point, John, um, it doesn't, it does not necessarily have to be an, uh, uh, a test or an examination that you get a score on um, uh, a, a competitive um, uh, examination process may be submit a bunch of applications and they're rated and they're ranked based on the submission and the con you know on based on content and that's considered a, an examination process in the, in the federal sector oh that's interesting okay okay good um 
I may check with some other towns and see what they have for their definitions on that. Um, and I'll check in the SPBR rules also. Um, demotion, fortunately, something we don't experience too much. Of. Uh, the movement of an employee from a position in one class to a position in another. Here's again that class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that in yellow. And, and and it's and again, the way I read that, it's just you, uh, you know, um, they may be demoted from one position to another. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure. I, again, I'm not I'm not what the what what class has to do with that. Exactly. You know, the, the reasons are very explicit why someone would be demoted. Like the notion of from one class to a position in another class, you know, if they're if they're a recreation specialist and they get the motion, I don't even know, like to a recreational assistant. I mean, yeah. it's still a demotion. That's what the point of that piece of that, art, that section is. So anyway. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just adding some commas in here for grammar because I'm just a freak about that. Um, for that one, I always get kind of funny about things that have lists like this. Um, just because I don't want us to be restricted to these as the only reasons for demotion. So I, these kind of things, I'd like to add something at the end, like, or as otherwise provided by law or as otherwise authorized by law, just in case there's, you know, if like a, a layoff causes a demotion or something, some other reason. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you right. don't want to be hamstrung by just that specific language. Right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Amy. Um, eligible list, a list of names of persons found qualified either through examination or reemployment procedure um, for the purpose of filling vacancies in the classified service. Do you have any questions about that definition? Well, I'm not sure I understand. What is reemployment procedure? Okay, so there is in the civil service rules, um, I think it <laughs> pertains almost exclusively to the fire department, a provision that says that if they are let go, they can be recalled for up to a year later. Um, and we actually had this happen one time. Like their position has to remain available to them even if you know something happened. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember what our circumstance was. I think that the individual had had a very extended disability and ran through all his workers' comp time, had applied for um, long-term disability through the Ohio Police and Fire Pension Fund, was in the process of, you know, had not gotten a final determination, but had kind of run out a year of paid leave, basically. Um, and got approved for the disability. And then at some point in time, I don't know whether he you know, made some miraculous recovery or what, but was no longer disability eligible. And the city had to rehire him because it was within a year of his separation. Um, so that's the only time I can remember that that reemployment has come into play. I'm gonna highlight it though, Mark, because mm -hmm. I wanna make sure when we get to that portion, we look for that and that that's very helpful i appreciate that uh, that ex explanation but and i'm ask ask the rest of the commission members should shouldn't that also include when we the the uh, eligibility lists that we approve through like in we recently have done for parks and rec or service department that are and i'm i'm just this is just words you know, that were that were considered through a you know an application consideration process where they were they're, they're, they were interviewed their resumes were scored they got additional points for any additional certifications that's that's the eligibility list that I'm most familiar with and, and we really don't reference that that's part of what we do there I see what you're saying you know what? I, I, I ask, yeah did, did you I'm just asking other members to kind of mm -hmm. And I think that kind of goes to what John was asking earlier about the competitive examination, um, what constitutes the examination. So, right. so, so if the competitive examination is the written test, um, is the examination just the process of collecting data about who meets the criteria and ranking them 
on a non-competitive basis. Is that sort of what you're saying, Mark? Well, but it is a competitive process, right? Because they, because because one of the things that, that we have done over the last few years is ask for um, sort of the scoring criteria that they would use mm -hmm. as they, you know, when they interview somebody, you know, you know what's it based on the the review of their application. Um, uh, I'm just, I can picture one, but I can't think of, you know, you know like I said, veterans preferences sometimes included in there, mm -hmm. like in the service department, any, any additional certifications they have in specialty areas and that kind of stuff. So, so there's, there's some review of their, they they are um, rated and ranked. And then that's the list that we use to certify the top three to be interviewed. Right. John, am I right on that? I mean, yes, I, I think you're making a really good point. And I think that w like when you look through these definitions, I think there's a difference between the fire and police and everything else. Right. And so I'm just wondering if there might be a way to to somehow delineate that, whether it's in a note or, you know, not to make it too complicated, but um, yeah. I, anyway, I, I, I see your point, Mark, that it's, there's sort of like, there's um, more to, <laughs> yeah, there, there definitely is more to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're, you're exactly right. We, we do more than just police and fire. Let me see. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to try to go out to my Chrome and you guys tell me what you see on your screen. Are you seeing my Chrome or are you still seeing the um, text of the thing? We see your Chrome. Okay. All right. Let's. Um, Cause I, I've been Googling that words while we, as we do this. <laughs> Put it in the Google. <laughs> yes, the Google <laughs> machine. <laughs> okay. Classification change. So there is not a definition oh, in one. Not even defined, huh? No. It makes me wonder where the definition came from. It's, um, I'm looking at some. I put in competitive examination process, and I got something that says people also people ask, "What is what what is mean by competitive exam?" A competitive examination is an examination where candidates are ranked according to their grades and or percentile, and then top rankers are selected. I mean, the eligible That's, list is essentially people who meet the minimum qualifications and have passed the exam, right? Isn't that what it means? They meet the minimum quals and they pass the exam and they can move on to potential interviews and background checks, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. It's just that when some some places in the rules, I think refer to exams in a context of a non police or fire. Mm -hmm. And it, I inferred that to lump in the whole process because mm -hmm. I equate it to how we evaluate, so, you know, the hiring process. So, I, so I agree with you. Yeah, so I'm looking at the I'm looking at the federal the Office of Personnel Management, the, the you know, um, and we and we have competitive service and accepted this other kind of thing. But anyway, it says in the competitive service, which is the normal, which is the non specialty area, but for most you know laborers and clerks and et cetera, uh, um, you know, that would be. Uh, it says an individual must go through a competitive process and then in parentheses, i.e. competitive examining, which is open to all applicants. This process may consist of a written test, comma, an, an evaluation of the individual's education and experience, comma, and or an evaluation of other attributes necessary for a successful performance in the position to be filled. So they may take a test, but otherwise they may be subject to, like in the case of our recreation people and our 
of service workers. We're just looking at what they bring to the table, all their all their attributes, right? Their what credentials they have, what experience they have, and then and then we ask them to we ask the person who's going to be supervising them and knows what the work is to basically rank them in that matrix, and it's from that. The, um, document that we certify the top three for continued, uh, you know, for an interview. Yeah. So what if we change it to say something along those lines? Like when we refer to examination, we just say like written examination or physical examination, if applicable or if required. I don't know. How about if we say a ranked list for starters? Based on the the based on the an evaluation of the individual individuals' education and experience, and, or other uh, qualifications necessary for the uh, for the position to be filled. But see, I don't know that I think we need to say all that because if we just say like as Joel has there met the qualifications posted or okay. the minimum qualifications that that encompasses education level okay. and what you just said. Okay. Yeah, I just just it just seemed like the, yeah to John's yeah. point earlier, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't addressing what we do a lot of, right, right, which is which is the other jobs, not necessarily police and fire, right, yeah. that aren't subject to that. I think that, that nicely that specific example yes. nicely uh, clarifies it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, are we good with the edits, or do you want to change anything that I've um, read it again? A ranked list of names of persons found to have met the qualifications posted for a position through examination, the reemployment process or procedure, or other selection criteria for the purpose of filling vacancies in the classified service. I can live with that. I like it. The only thing I'm having and hauling over is if we need to say minimum qualifications. But that's just coming from my state work and everything, you know, minimum qualifications mean something there, but I don't, I don't know if it means the same thing here. Okay. So I'm humming and hawing over that. I don't know. Joelle, what do you think? Um, it's a good point. I mean, if, if there are minimum qualifications, somebody could end up being, you know, position number 75 on the list, but they'll be ranked. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see any downside to including it. Because okay. we would rank everybody. I mean, you know, even if they just were barely breathing and met the criteria, they'd still be on the list. They just wouldn't be very high on the list. Right, right. So they're not going to get anywhere anyway. Yep. They okay. fogged the mirror. They fogged <laughs> That's right. Okay. Eligible. That's residents. the acid test. <laughs> um. I honestly don't know what the eligible register is. Um, I, I actually, we're done with it. Yeah, in in our world, in my former world, I should say that was actually the list that was given by the the you know in in, in like, like for example in our instance, it may be the list from the the vendor who does the police test. It may be the actual list. Ah. That's the eligible register. Um, but I, I if if it's if that's confusing or we're adding another layer, I, th I would suggest deleting it because it's ultimately number 12 that we say this is we certify this is the list of eligibles for to for consideration for any of those three categories. Correct? Yeah, yeah I think it's excessive. I don't. OK. Think All right. I would agree if we can. And it's not and I'm not superstitious about it being 13. I'm a little stitious. I'm not superstitious. <laughs> I'll be infrastitious. Uh, all right. Employees. So, Joelle, will you run a search through the the rest of it to make sure that we're yeah. like, then cutting out and like yes, in good references? point, excellent point. Yeah, we we are, we're not we're not going to begin up somewhere else. Color, yeah, just so I remember that. Yeah, yeah that's a good point because it always connects somehow. Right. Yeah. Right. right. or other occurrences. We, we could help you do that too. I don't know how long we're going to go tonight, but between now and the next time, we can also kind of. Yep. 
Okay. Uh, all right. Employee, any person holding a position subject to appointment, removal, promotion, or reduction by the appointing authority, since we only have one. Mm -hmm. Some some towns, I think, probably do have multiple people, but um, employee status, a term utilized to describe an employee's title, salary range, and type of employment. I don't know that that's really an essential term, but I don't know that it hurts anything. Any strong feelings? I guess I mean, it's 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 it seems sort of unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Hey, that's Bill Nolan. Hey, <laughs> that's the first thing about share screen. <laughs> it's like, I can't disable. Like name. <laughs> I try really hard to disable. Well, of course, you guys are going to know all the same people. <laughs> we all do the same kind of work. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. All right, give me two seconds here. What was I going to write here? Do we need this term? All right. Examiner, an authorized employer representative of the commission who is responsible for carrying out designated functions of commission activities. I think that's typically Leilani who you would designate. Um, Leilani, do you proctor exams or do you attend all the examinations or? Um, I did. Okay. I don't know, Joelle. I, it hasn't happened since I've been here. Okay. Well, it's, everything's so weird right now. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't make sense for you to have that role. I mean, assuming but that I, there's not I some other Debbie past did. practice. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think Debbie did, and I know that the clerk at the city of Powell does. Okay, okay. interesting. All right. I'll uh, leave, the note. leave it then, no? I don't like the name, actually, but whatever. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> the examiner, it just means something different than what that definition says, but it's... I know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think of it more as like, is it is it like a prox a proctor? Yeah. Or delegate or something? Like is she's our, our designee, she's our delegate or designee or something. Maybe that, it's probably not any better, but it's just a weird word for, for that, I think. Kind of like the Grim Reaper or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no test for you. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. She went, she went away. Where'd she go? <laughs> <laughs> she hit on us from the screen. <laughs> uh, municipal service refers to positions in the service of the city. Again, a throwaway term as far as I'm concerned, but whatever. Uh, new position, a position created by proper authority because of authorized additions to an organizational unit or through a substantial authorized change in class. Again, that class. All new positions must be designated as classified or unclassified by the Civil Service Commission. Um, and by proper authority, we mean like department heads or the mayor or. Yeah, so this was a cart before the, the horse thing. Okay. So, uh, because the positions, all right, if a department head, and there's a process that's spelled out in here, if a department head wants a new position for his or her department, you know, first, I'm sure they're going to talk to the finance department and see if it can be funded. Um, but before they can go through any steps to, you know, advertise for it and so forth, they would prepare a description, uh, explain to you why there's a need for this position, why it's justified. You would determine whether to approve the position and, and the position description. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, from the budgetary standpoint, you don't do any of that. Council would either have to appropriate additional money <laughs> if that position hadn't been envisioned, um, or it would say, no, you can't have this new hire. Um, now, some positions actually have to, uh, by charter, be spelled out in the um, certified ordinances. So just as an example, this year we hired um, Aubrey Hale, who is the, um, she coordinates community outreach and Bob, what's the other part of her title? It's not communications, but I'm blanking out. Yeah. Special projects. Yeah, this, we have a community affairs, if I recall. Sorry? Sorry, Bob. No, we, we have her a strategy and engagement officer. Strategy and engagement officer. Okay. So we didn't have that position before, but because it's a mayoral appointment, 
uh, albeit not as a, as a director level, um, we had to create the position through legislation. But again, it had come before you, it had been presented to you, you guys approved it for purposes of saying, you know, this is consistent with how we've described other positions, then council approved it. Um, and then, um, you know, allocated money for the mayor to be able to hire that person. Um, so this is, it's a little it, bit what I say before the horse because it's like, well, he's got the authority to start this process. Um, a position if I recall in that instance, one of the things we had to do at that meeting was to actually designate it as classified or unclassified. Correct. Am I, am I correct? correct? Yes. So, and she was unclassified. Right. She serves at the leisure of the mayor. Right. But but in the establishment of a, any new position, that final sentence um, uh, shouldn't be lost. Correct? I mean, because that's right. that's that the, that's the function of the commission. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So, do we need the words by proper authority? Any any new well, basically, any new position has to be has to be deemed be designated as either classified. Or unclassified by the commission, yeah. right? Isn't that that's that's the essence of that? Yeah. Is that you, you? Somebody, anybody can. Well, through this other process that you've described, someone can, someone can create a, or get authorization for a new position, but ultimately has to be determined whether it's classified or unclassified by the commission. Right. Who actually creates the position? You do. I mean, it's requested by a department head or by the administration, but you create it. And and that's not any different than, um, you know, under 124. Did I leave it open? Okay. So, so a new position is requested and then approved by the commission. It's requested to, and it's approved and ultimately designated as either classified or unclassified. Yeah. This is 124, okay. Yeah. I don't see that it's actually in here, but I thought it was. Classification change means a change in any in employee's classification in the job classification plan. That, and again, the job classification plan is just the listing of all of the positions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not a huge thing, but all right. I, I think there's probably no harm in leaving it the way it's currently phrased. But it's good to have these discussions. Um, other, other than that, changing class, that, you know, or through a substantial authorized change in class. Yeah. Um, how about if we just say, rather than say additions to changes, because that could be any kind of change. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense of that. I like that better. So it's uh, yeah. 630. Yeah. Um, I cannot continue past 630 tonight. Not to say that you all can't go on, but I didn't know what your all's thoughts were. Okay. Looks like we have quite a few more definitions. Um, I'm at your leisure, guys. If you want to try to go a little bit longer without John, you can. Or if you want to put a pause in it and pick it back up later and give you a little more time to think on these, we can do that as well. I think let's pause it. I, I feel like we should have John. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, I also think I, I, I appreciate now that we have a defined process, we can begin to do our homework before the next one and make any make any questions or you know have any comments you know, ahead of the next meeting and i'll send this to you guys uh, give me time in the morning to try to pin down some of the margin notes that we've noted here and maybe scribble some additional comments and i'll circulate this for a working version for whenever you decide to meet next Thanks, Joel. And I and I was going to I was going to ask if you would do that, Joel, so that I can, as part of the minutes, just include what we worked on. Yeah. Leilani, Good. thank you for keeping this going and 
yeah. driving it forward for Insisting, us. yeah, right. <laughs> no worry. I, do I, I, need, I, I guess I need to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mark. No, I was just going to say, I, 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 you know, I, I've looked at this thing several times and I find myself at meetings kind of flipping back and forth. So going through this item by item is helpful to my education and what I do on the commission. And, um, and, and again, the three of us doing it as current commission members helps us all be on the same page too, I think. So, um, yeah, I agree. As, as the newbie, good. it's helpful to go through this process early. Sure. So, yeah. And for what yeah, it's worth, great. I'm not the newbie, Amy, but every time we have a situation, you know, it's, it's not a document like a handbook where we live with it every single day and right. out of the desk drawer and, you know, know where to look. Um, knock on wood, these situations come up um, rarely. Um, and it's always helpful to sort of make this as simple of a, as clear a document as possible. And, and uh, um, when we get into some of those other kind of trickier areas, you know, um, is it, and we can talk about what's the intent there, right? And that becomes part of the history of the revisions. Like when we had, you know, when we did the charter review, as an example, we would include the discussions about why we thought this language was better than that language or what, what was the sort of the, you know, the, the juice behind the sleeves there. So, but, okay. All right. All right. I've got time to do this. Anytime you want to do this, you just name it. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm, I'm, I get flexibility. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Leilani, should I, um, just say that, um, our second item of new business was to review the input from department heads. I think we talked about that brief. Well, we really didn't go into that question from the fire chief, but do we just want to table that until the next time? I would, I, I would move we'll that we table it. At the beginning. Yeah. I think Joelle mentioned at the beginning, we'll address comments when we get to the sections, right, Joelle? Yeah. Is that yeah. the best way? Yep. Yep. I would say. Okay. Um, well, in light of that, I guess, is there any other business to bring before the Civil Service Commission? Our pay. Right. There being no other business. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Mark? I said our our <laughs> pay. Double your pay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Every yes, time we meet it, we, our pay gets doable. double. I, I don't I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> Channel six is gonna be all over this when they find out. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be trouble. <laughs> it's gonna be trouble. Well, um, with that, we'll adjourn today's meeting and we'll pick it up the next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for Thank everybody. You, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Good